Today on Timescast, for the first time in 10 days, Libyan jets strike rebel strongholds in the east. It is time for Gaddafi to go. Now without further violence or delay. The international community pressures Colonel Gaddafi to step down. Have fracture here. And anti-government residents of Benghazi show the cost of speaking out. This is Karim Fahim reporting from Benghazi, Libya. Today we saw a counteroffensive by forces loyal to Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. There were airstrikes in eastern Libya for the first time in more than 10 days. Military commanders in the rebel-held eastern part of the country said that two fighter planes flew over bombing an ammunition depot and some sort of a pipeline. The counteroffensive on three fronts by the government uh, seems to indicate that Colonel Qaddafi still holds key military assets and is unwilling to yield power anytime soon. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton today delivered the administration's most blunt warning to Muammar Gaddafi. The discussions that I had today uh, focused on how we can keep the pressure on the Gaddafi regime without harming the Libyan people. This came as the United States announced uh, $10 million in USAID funding for a relief effort on Libya's borders with both Tunisia and Egypt, where hundreds of thousands of refugees are streaming in an effort to get out of Libya. In parallel, she also announced that the United States might make Navy warships available uh, for humanitarian relief. And this uh, raises a lot of interesting questions about whether the U.S. is poised to engage in some uh, wider military intervention in the situation. They, they want to get a good outcome here without appearing to be dictating events. And the minute you talk about using uh, the U.S. military or Navy warships, that's a level of U.S. involvement that goes well beyond what you've seen in any of the other countries in the region. Remember in Egypt, even at the worst times, we were talking about uh, a, a few hundred people being killed in clashes. In Libya, you're really faced with a virtual civil war in the country. I think you'll see the United States be very careful to couch anything it does within the context of an international effort. The focus here is mostly on assistance that would uh, head off a humanitarian disaster as opposed to offering them arms or ammunition. And in Benghazi, speaking out against Colonel Gaddafi comes at a cost. David Bati has this report. All my body is like this. They were using the machine guns and hitting everywhere here. I can show you all my body. I have fracture here, skull fracture. When I got shot, I fell onto the ground and my arm was paralyzed. The blood was rushing out. They took us to the hospital. We were among the first group of injured. On a recent morning, I was invited to the home of Khalid Azwai to speak with him and his neighbor, Usama Mbeg. Both men are among the untold number of people here injured in anti-government protests less than two weeks ago. Khalid, an accountant, was shot on this street, which, like most of the city, is creeping back to normal. A bullet entered Khalid's arm and exited his armpit as he tried to rescue an injured man and drag him out of the way. I was really happy until the day I got hurt. Then I started thinking of all the days that I wouldn't be able to be out there with them. Osama, a cardiologist, was captured by security forces, beaten, and accused of being a foreign troublemaker. And he said, are you Libyan? I told him, yeah, I'm Libyan. As many people believe in Benghazi, Osama says Gaddafi will fall, and soon, even while the leader remains in power. And as at least the physical wounds begin to heal in Benghazi, all in this group of friends say there's no going back. Everything will be fixed as long as the dictator is gone, because we know what we want. He won't be able to get in our way. People are not asleep. They know what's going on, and they know what they want. Join us again tomorrow for Timescast.